Hey, good afternoon everyone. I hope you're doing well today. It is noon on hump day and uh, some of you have had broken off from your uh, your uh, break there. I'm glad you came here to join me today and uh, looking forward to, you know, uh, talking about the track. I have cars in the background laying rubber and I have a few people on. We have a uh, Mr. Dan Wiley, which is 33 Green Wasteway. How you doing? We got John Tucci. Got Pistol Pete. How you doing, Pistol Pete? Uh, oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. <laughs> ah, cool. Hello, Pistol Pete. Well, talk with Kevin. Uh, I'm sure he'll be able to, you know, fill your needs. And I know he's coming out with more layout, so you could wait a little. And there's also other cool stuff he's planning on doing that are going to be really interesting. I can't talk about that, but uh, again, it's uh, you know, it's uh, it's gonna be good stuff. <laughs> hey, Dave, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. Appreciate that. But uh, you know, just hang in there. I know Kevin's got more stuff coming, but uh, we're here just talking Q and A on the track. Talked from Marty last night a little bit. Uh, so if anybody's interested. Uh, Oh, really, Pistol P, you've been messaging uh, Kevin back and forth. I hope you can hear me clear. I know last night I didn't have this mic hooked up. I thought I did. I think I had the camera one, so it was echoing. So I tested this one this morning, so I should be pretty clear. And there shouldn't be any really a lot of background noise from the track, so let me know how it sounds. Um, I was kind of really irritated that it turned out that way when I watched the live. rewatched my section of it and the other stuff. Well, anyways, but... Um, okay, cool. Thank you, Pistol Pete. <laughs> I'm on the edge of calling Kevin. Well, you know, also, you guys, if you ever want to make a trip to North Carolina, you could check out his shop, too. I mean, come check this track out to get a feel for it. Um, but, uh, excuse me a second. <coughs> Pardon me. Damn uh, pollen. <laughs> Damn pollen from the south. Coats everything. So, uh, like I said, uh, Anybody's interested, you know, you can come in a call or ask me any questions right now about it, you know, in particular. Richard White, uh, Richard Whitney, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Thank you for everybody who's come today. Uh, it's very, very nice. Tony Tibbs, hey, how you doing? Good day to you, sir. <laughs> no throwing mics today. I'll try not to. I don't want to do that. Can't afford to be throwing equipment. Got a lot of cameras, so I've been really, uh, I would just say, uh, getting all my cameras together, I am using OBS down here. I do prefer the eCam, but I only have a, a, a micro, you know, a Windows-based laptop down here, which is a good one. And having to go to eCam wouldn't mean to having to buy a Mac computer. And I bought one when I moved in here, and that was pretty pricey, so I think I'm not going to do anything like that unless I find a good deal. But uh, otherwise, this is what I have. I have my... I have my Insta360 camera as right here. Uh, I bought this camera, I think about three months ago. I've only used it twice. This, you know, experimenting with it. Now I, I finally using it as a face camera because the camera on the on the laptop is pretty weak, so it's not that great. That's why I use it. But uh, you know, anyways, it's all good. But uh, appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Tony Tibbs. It does have a nice flow. It's uh, it's really nice. It's uh, everything works really well. You know the way all the cars go through and everything. Swift slot, sir. How you doing? I just finished watching the Supervan two thing. That was really cool. If uh, any of you guys haven't seen Swift slots on the Supervan, very very uh, detailed and very beautiful model. Saw car model. Really good job there. Uh, really really good job job on that. But, Pistol Plea, you got a question here. How hard would it be to dismantle the oval in two pieces, transport to Um So it wouldn't be hard because if you do request that, so Kevin hit, would, would add drops. So if you could see right here, I'm going to point it out, hold on. Right here. Those are the only drops I have. Uh, so if you were to do two drops on one side of the oval and then on this side, that's where you could break it down. 
and transport it in two pieces. But I know, you know, talk to Kevin on transporting and stuff and shipping because I know when you get the the pieces, they will be in individual pieces. This track was 12 pieces. And he brought it in this SUV and it could have fit in the back trunk of my Toyota. It wasn't wasn't like a bunch of huge pieces. There were sections and they're very manageable. So yeah, I would say that's very possible to do that very easily. So that's that's a that's a no brainer there. That's why he designed this track. Chris, how you doing, sir? Thanks for joining us. But yeah, give Kevin a chat on that. I think he'll be able to assist you on doing something like that as far as, you know, having to uh you know, have that question about transporting it in a certain piece. So but uh yep. So it's all good. All good stuff. You know, he's always doing something different. So I mean pretty good. I like it, it looks better than your last uh yeah it is. Nothing against a plastic track. A plastic track is a great way to start for people that are beginning in the hobby, but the thing is when you have a plastic track you could change it and stuff this is also modular but i wouldn't want to only to add to it i mean i guess you could you know you can take the part in the sections and do stuff but the thing with the plaster tracks is a little bit easier and uh it would be it'd be more uh ways that you could do different layouts so you get one you really like because one thing when you commit to a wood track you kind of have that one that you preferably are stuck with but in this case this one you may not because it is modular it's just a little bit more working to be a plastic track so hello Jeff G so Pistol Pete uh, I work at a car show Lola Wisconsin 140 would like to set up a, up a sock car show yeah that you know that is very 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 manageable to do that uh, Pistol Pete I would talk with Kevin give him your ideas what you want to do with it and I think it'd be easily to transport it in four sections if it's, you know, depending how big of a oval you get. Sometimes even a, a small size oval will be more exciting as well. Because you could do a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of run a lot of cars on a four lane if you want, depending on how many lanes you want. So, hello Andy and Ruben Racing. How are you doing? And Daniel Thomas, hello. Thanks for joining us. So, uh, as you can see, one of the cars stopped. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Typical slotted braid or wire, they pop off the braid. It actually broke. So that's why the car stopped. I already had a Momo do that to me, so now I got two cars I need to fix the braid on. That's why when I do the when I do the braid or it's because somebody was asking that on, on Marty's live the braid what I generally do and it, it works well to keep that from happening and everybody has a different way of doing it is that I get the end of the wire I leave like a small strip out enough to tuck it in the braid and then I solder that end and then I smash it with a pair of pliers to make it flat and then I put it in there with the braid and then I drill the hole in the front bulkhead of the of the guide and then I put a set screw in there and then you put the wire there with the braid and it squeezes the the wire onto the braid and it's pretty much foolproof you cannot you have to physically yank that super hard for it to come out and it really locks it in place really well that's how I've done it so but uh that's why typically the slotted and the wire will pop off and break because a lot of turning and turning and you know what happens. Kevin's joining us. How you doing, Kevin? Cool. Kevin can ask him a lot of other questions. So actually, Kevin Pistol Pete was asking a question, uh, and he asked, uh, "How hard would it be to dismantle an oval in two pieces to transport 12 feet uh, to 14 foot track?" And I told him, that "Very possible," because he wants to take it to uh, uh, sh car shows. Is what he what he was saying and then just put it together and just run it at a car show so Kevin's here he can answer that question real well too uh, Swift slots yeah sideways have crappy snappy wire as well yeah that is true <laughs> Daniel Thomas you have a question is that car in ghost mode on the wood routed track or am I or am I just fake no I have the controllers 
tape. Actually, I need to go buy some clamps from Harbor Freight, which Harry uses. You put the clamps on, and you could, you know, push the trigger in as far as you want, and the clamp holds it. And, uh, no, it's on ghost mode. That is on a piece of tape on my controller to lay rubber on there, and i got to put another car in there. Marty, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. Marty's here. Let me see about picking another car uh, real quick. Um, let me see. Let me put this. Oh, GT40. All right, there we go. Take care of that. <clears throat> cool. Again, I'm just laying rubber on the track. It's starting to get its pattern little by little. Yep, lunchtime for Marty. That's I know what. That's why I did that morning on purpose. You can see me at lunch. <laughs> oh, but uh, anyways, it's good. It's Kevin here. He's probably busy there at work too, but also is watching a little as he uh, is doing his thing. So, but uh, as you can see above there in the photo, I have of what this layout is. It has lane lengths on the outside lane, inside lane. That you know. The size of it, and in meters, and in, in uh, you know feet. So if you guys see that, that's what this pattern is right here. This layout. Yeah, no problem, Marty. <laughs> um, but uh, yep. If you guys are interested in asking me anything on this, please do. Tony Tibbs, what is your lunchbox today, Marty? Oh, everybody's interested in what Marty is gonna eat, huh? <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, yeah, no problem, Marty. It was fun. <clears throat> I'm glad. glad I did. I know my mic was terrible because I got the actual mic that I used for that. And what happened was it was connected to the ZV Sony mic. That's why there's a lot of echoing. So I was kind of, I was watching the stream. I was like, oh, man, that sounded terrible. But <laughs> you forgot your lunch at home. What are you saying when he gets a wood track? <laughs> Thank you, Daniel Thomas. It, it's getting there. Adding more things in here. I gotta add the track lighting. <clears throat> That's another project. You can see I have the signs lit up, and uh, gonna look forward to uh, get more of that done. <clears throat> Anyways, you guys. Uh, well, chat about anything, go for it. Uh, I know Marty is uh, had a going to be interesting him talking about you know next week about that brushless motor because I know a lot of people are looking at that, but uh, very interesting. And then you know it's good that everybody comes on there and asks questions, especially people at the beginner level. You know, it's very important. The little signs look good. Thank you. Uh, Swift Sods, will that track take full size? Yes, it will. It is the same lane spacing as a Carrera uh, track. So it's 4 inch lane spacing. So I could put 124th, 125th, and 132nd cars, and you know 143rd, and get the special shoes for HO that will run on there too. Yes, sir. I'll run 124th as well. They have enough of the lane spacing to put two cars side by side. And there's a lot of room in the apron too there. So they could swing out. Uh, but uh, yes, they will run, take full 124 size cars. <laughs> Your wife fixes you lunch. Uh, working from home is great. Yeah, that is. Thank you, Swiss Lots. Appreciate that. But uh, it's always great to have options in the hobby, as you know, as everybody says. This is an option, so uh, I know the uh, lead time waiting for this is pretty quick. So you're gonna have to wait a long time. And the big A land barges, yep, the big, a, big <laughs> the big land barges will fit on there too, no problem. Yeah, there's just so much curiosity about brushless and uh, with the velocity adapter, it is a super easy install. Yep, bet it is. It's going to be a little. People have to really come into doing that because I know it's kind of like uh, there's some people that you know that are still old school and they don't. They don't see anything in that, but it's there's some people that are interested, which is fine. You know, it's again, it's nice to have options. So, but uh, I know they weren't going to allow the motor set up in the Michigan Michigan 24, but then they changed their mind. So, pretty interesting. So, maybe you should make an own class for just brushless motors. 
and keep them, you know, out of the brushed motor loop. They could do that if people would want to make a separate class. I think that would be a good idea to do that. But uh, yeah, who knows? But everybody is, uh, you know, I'm pretty old school. I like the old school stuff. But I'm not opposed to trying something new just to try it out. You know, just to say I did it. But anyway, speaking of land barges, has, how are everyone's builds coming? Yeah, how's everybody's land barge builds coming? I know uh, Jeff G, Michael Squire, uh, Lee Wright did a real nice uh, Wendell Scott one. It looks good. Um, I know I got one done. I had to finish another one and in the zipper top, so I have been kind of behind on that with this project down here. So, but, yep, and then Dan's got what 70% of it built. Cool. I think the motor will shine in long endurance racing. Yeah, yeah, most likely will. We'll have to see if they make a separate class for it or not, but we'll see. John Tucci, question. Anything special I need to do before I try to cut my axles on the land barge? Uh, well, make sure you measure twice and cut once. Uh, if you're putting inserts, make sure that they're right at flush with the wheels because if it, the axle's sticking out, when you try and put an insert, it's going to interfere with that. Uh, but otherwise, you know, just make sure you got your fit correct and leave you some rooms if you need to add spacers. Because sometimes when you get it cut and then you put it on and you see maybe something may be off a little or you may want to push the wheels out just a tad bit. So leave some room for some, you know, some spacers, you know, 10,000 spacers if you need them. This will Pete, I bought a roller, but doing the chassis by my scratch... Uh, first now just got it my big shipment from SEC yesterday cool yeah you know uh, if you got an H&R chassis that's that's a good way of doing it H&R chassis is a good way to start out with I that's why I did that video as an example of that with that, that Junior Johnson Pontiac and uh, I got it all packed away this in the Harry I just have to finish the other cars which I'm, I'm behind on I have a Impala another Junior Johnson Holly Farms car that I'm doing and then I gotta figure out what to do on the uh, zipper top because I have a 57 Chevy, I think it is, for a zipper top. But, yeah, no problem, John Tucci. Anytime we can help you. Uh, there's also a video loaded up on the uh, John Tucci on the uh, Home Racing World uh, main site under Scratch Building. And uh, Michael Squire has tips on cutting axles, so you might want to look up that video. That's been put on there. So, you guys, if you need any information for any of that, go to Scratch Building section in the HRW main site so it'll say HRW main site and you go there and you type in the and type in the search scratch building and that'll all the videos for scratch building things will come up there from everybody that, that posted there so it's like a one-stop video area there Tony Tibbs I've got a birthday in a couple of weeks and ordered a 2 by 18 two 18 K's and two 20 app K predator motors and some brackets from soccer corner we can't wait to try them out yeah, you good motors, good uh, long can motors, and good short can motors, and the brackets are really, really, really nice. Uh, very well, very well done. Travel number four discs. Yep, to cut them. Yep, nice thin ones. Yep, like butter. There you go, disc cut like butter. That's right. You gotta get a good disc to do it. You gotta be careful it doesn't shatter on you. Make sure you wear safety glasses. Those things will shatter sometimes. And they're real delicate. If you hit them the wrong way, they'll break. <laughs> nice, Jan and Jeff. You are on the ball, man. Yep, sure are. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Well, you guys have any more questions on anything else? Go ahead and ask. I know the, uh... How about showdown cars? Anybody's doing showdown cars? You know, besides the lamp barges. <clears throat> there is the showdown kit, you know, you could get. I mean, you guys are... <clears throat> Not having to buy it unless you want to buy it, you know, if you have individual brass pieces, that's fine. But the kit's available, so anybody else building showdown cars? Is, uh, I know we're all focusing on land barges, but there's also the showdowns here and the modifieds. <coughs> Excuse me, the modifieds are another good, uh, you know, class as well that, that, uh, it's a little bit tougher, but it's possible. Not very hard to build a modified. Uh, anyways, 
Let's see, Pistol Pete, can't wait to see the shotgun's latest challenge. Yep, yeah, he's got, uh, <coughs> excuse me, he's got a front wheel drive uh, car there. It's really interesting to see how that works out. And, uh, you know, that'd be good. Be good. Check that out. Marty, yeah, they've been done for a while. I posted my builds on Shotgun Davis Facebook page. Yep, you sure have. When is the next showdown proxy? It's with the land barges, so the July 19th, 20th, and 21st, that weekend. That's, uh, that's the modifieds and the and the showdown along with the land barges. Land barges is just a series next to the showdown. So there's always showdown cars and modified cars, and then they add a, sometimes an extra series with that. So, <clears throat> but Cool, doing both showdown cars. All right, cool. It's nice, you know, to have a different scale as well and it's a little bit of a different you know size basically the same just a little smaller modifieds are ones that are uh, a lot of people get intimidated but intimidated by those those don't take much it's just uh you know it's a real simple chassis you can make a simple chassis you make a modified with a motor bracket so, got a stupid acre model coming in today for the showdown all right cool <coughs> Plenty of model kits for 125. Say that much. Not so much for 132nd though, but there is the Atlantis kits. You need to remember that you could use those. There's the Trans Am and the, the Nova and the uh, Camaro can be used as a showdown car. You just got to hog out the wheel wells. Front wheel drive car that looks like it was a rear wheel drive car about 10 minutes before. <laughs> yeah, just spin the body around. Tony Tibb, it's an interesting watching those cars. The white one keeps lapping the blue one. Yeah, the the white one is the P68 NSR, which is really tuned really good. Uh, that thing does real well. The other one is the uh, Slotted White Kit. I painted blue and black and put it together. And the chassis I had got from eBay was an extra one with another car that I was given with part of the deal. So I was able to get another had a body kit lying around in white kit and I did that so I just probably don't have it turned up a little bit more that's why I have it slower <laughs> I don't want to be slotting so easily I'm trying to master basic soldering it's still soldering keeps balling up and rolling on rolling on off it's on the stick so <clears throat> are you using flux and are you keeping the iron there long enough so that the solder and flux could do its job because if you and also the size of the solder you're not using like you know how would you say uh, you know rebarb style solder <laughs> you want the thin stuff the 0 0.8 millimeter solder the thin stuff that works better and helps with flow because you got to heat that up longer when it's the thicker stuff and that's where you get that ball on and stuff like that but you got to leave the iron on there for a while to let it heat up the brass and then heat up the solder and then the flux and then it'll all do its job. You just got to put heat to it and be patient. Yeah, we should make some 132nd marabytes for the show done. You, you know, <coughs> if the guy who made those, if he's okay with us making uh, resin molds, that's what you got to ask him first, Marty, because we don't want to, we're not going to sell them, obviously. We're trying to put them out there for only the people who want to build. That's the thing we got to be careful with. But if you... I'm sure Dave would be happy to cast that. It'd be nice to have a Maverick. It'd be pretty interesting. We need more 132nd bodies. It's nice, especially the American Muscle or American Iron. That Maverick is a cool looking car, Marty. Never seen one before. Yep. I remember getting in a brand new one when I was, I think it was like six or seven. I was, uh, you know, being babysitted when I was a kid because I had to go to school and he would take me to school and it was a brand new red Maverick. Black interior and column shift, uh, column, you know, automatic. I remember getting that thing. It was specifically, it was a, I think it was a 70, 72 Maverick, something like that. <coughs> Maverick Grabber Showdown. Yep. Yep. It'd be cool to have something like that. You have the 224 two, Maverick Grabber body. Really? <coughs> Is that in a. 132nd or 125th, uh, Mr. 33 Bean Raceway. What uh, scale do you have? Yeah, this is a town 
Slotfest UK is being held. That was being funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure <laughs> it'd be nice to go to England, but that'd be a little bit far for me and expensive. But we appreciate. That. <laughs> yeah, that's a. I wasn't sure if that was a town or not. I mean, because uh, I don't know, you know, English towns that well. Only the ones that year a lot, London and all that stuff. Um, yeah, the 302 and the grabber. Yep. 124 resin. Ah, gotcha. Uh, gotcha. 124 scale. A lot of 124s and 125th cars. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Anybody else have anything they want to add, man? Just uh, shoot out there. Whatever you want to talk about. I know this is a middle of a work week. Hump day. Everybody's probably working and stuff, and uh, but, uh, Marty's having lunch for the moment, and he's got to go back to work. <laughs> I work tomorrow. My work week starts tomorrow. So, it's kind of like that, nah. but anyways. Anybody uh, has any more questions about this track? I know there's a few of them. Uh, about breaking one down and, uh, and the processes or anything like that. I know the newer, the other tracks that are being made currently, they're a lot, lot easier to deal with than uh, what I did. So Kevin streamlined everything. Uh, Zero point eight solder wire and solder flux, solder flux paste, a generic Chinese brand. Uh, Daniel Thomas. Don't use the uh, flux paste. You want to use the acid flux. So that's the stay clean stuff you can get from Amazon. That'll uh, that'll work a lot better. Only thing with flux is that you have to clean your chassis after you're done, and it will get corrosion. And usually, uh, some uh, baking soda and will clean it up nicely. Or if you have a uh, a sonic cleaner, which does a good job too, a little cheap sonic cleaner. You put it in there, and set it in there for 15, 20 minutes, and then wash it off. But yeah, that will work too. What do I do for work swift slots? I'm a fleet mechanic for Walmart Transportation. So our company services the Walmart fleet, all their tractor trailers, so all the trailers, all the refrigeration part of it, the tractors, the engines, you know, the auxiliary power units. Uh, on the tractors, so I I mainly deal with tractors. So you know, making doing the uh, inspections every twenty five thousand miles, uh, making sure they are very very uh, safe, and uh, that's that's my job. Because every time I do an inspection, I'm signing a legal document that this vehicle is suitable for the road and safe. So yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> Uh, yes, there you go, Jeff G. Correct, Daniel. Not pace, liquid type. Correct. Any hints on what you're planning on the infield down the street? Uh, there's something that Kevin's making for that, so I can't really say much on that. I'll wait till I announce it on a video. So, yeah, but there's something that's going to be done there. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, the lights, uh, cool. My dad did uh, that sort of thing. I was like, really, Swift Slots? I didn't know that. Yeah. You guys call them lorries there. We call them tractors here. And they use a different term. And then your guys' trucks are they're uh, like cab overs. Whereas ours are, you know, they have the big nose in the front. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's why, that's why I haven't been talking about it, you know, in depth. But yes, sir. You know, when the time comes, it'll come and we'll put it on there. So, uh, got to work on the lights. And uh, I got the rest of the... Barriers I need to put in the infield, the uh, the borders, you know, for the the uh, the guardrails. Can't can't think of that word. I need to get some more paint, and uh, I'll probably do that on Sunday or Saturday night, maybe when I pick up the paint in the weekend and uh, shoot more paint on that and then put the rest of it. You can see I got one piece right here. This piece because I'm worried about the cars sailing off from the center lane or the outer lane and then hitting the floor <laughs> which wouldn't be good so I've done that 
and that's a shorter you know piece and it looks good so I'm really happy with that just to keep it from flying off we have no noses sadly yes well I know the refrigeration units on your guys's stuff is it's narrower too because thermal King is the company that uh, is who I work for so the company that we represent is thermal King and they make the real narrow ones so juggernaut uh. so. Thomas, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, noses don't fit in the county villages. Yes, sir, that is so true. There's more room here in America. That's why we got those long nose things. And then you hear the, uh, you have these joker drivers that drive these ones that, you know, they have what's called a Jake brake. And the, the older ones, when they engage the Jake brake on the older engines, which they're cat engines. They'll make that, um, brrrr, I make that loud sound trying to, you know, scare people. Let's uh, call it a retarder, <laughs> engine retarder. Whereas a lot of the new tractors are just, it's just an engine, you know, engine brake, but it's not, not anything like that. It uses, you know, modules and does it a different way. It doesn't make all that racket. But yeah, England has, you know, it's just limited space so that's why they have the they call them lorries with the cab overs so but it's a different different you know thing there it'd be interesting to see how you guys do stuff of course here in the u.s we have the uh the long nose stuff we used to have cab overs but they became unpopular one well, because of the limited space because we do have over the road trucks so the back of the trucks that we have have more room you know there's there they have an auxiliary power unit for ac and heating and you know, for powering an inverter to power your microwave, they had a refrigerator in there, and they have a two bunk style. So there's a lot of room in there. <coughs> Little cabinets to put your clothes in and stuff like that. So, Kevin Jones, how you doing? Welcome. Thanks for coming in. But, uh, <laughs> so, um, what else is going on with everybody? No, not as good as some of the people talking live. <laughs> but I do the best I can. Uh, the uh, anything else going with with you guys? You bought any new cars at all? I mean, let's see what's uh, come out. Was the Scale Auto Porsche? Everybody's been talking about a lot. A lot of people have been buying those and uh, doing different. Actually, the one that uh, ran in the Michigan 24 had a. Uh, I think that was a Porsche, wasn't it? And it had the uh, brushless motor in it. So, but. Uh, Harry did a live uh, review on one, and it was really nice. So, 600 miles from the top to bottom in the UK. Wow. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's... Uh, I didn't realize it was that. That was the mile. How many miles from top to bottom? I didn't know that. 600 miles. I thought it was bigger. How much elevation is back there on the straight? Uh, you know... Give me another tape measure. Well, I'd say like about 4 inches, maybe. From top to bottom uh, I started on just before the you know right at the S and then I went to the up around the hairpin and then around there so I think about four inches maybe five I haven't measured it I should measure it so it is a nice car which one Morty <laughs> the Maverick let's say yeah you need to ask the guy who printed it if we're okay with uh, Dave doing a castings of it if he's okay with doing castings of it then send the car to to dave and he'll do some castings so we could have some be nice to have a maverick body turn it into a uh, a uh, dirt car because you had to hog out the wheel wells on those i think the one you got was was the uh, regular stock factory wheel wells so we'd have to cut those out more that's what dirt cars are those hogged out wheel wells so Yep, the nine six. Oh, the nine sixty three. Yeah, the Porsche. Yeah, I know Harry's sending it to me, so I could try it out on here. He packed it up after he did his live, and he was saying he wanted to send it to me, so I'm gonna check it out. I never owned a Scale Auto before, so this is the first time I'll be getting a Scale Auto to try. So I'll probably be hooked on those when I get this one and <laughs> start driving. And go, oh, I gotta buy one of these. So, but uh, yeah, and I know Raul has always told me I should get a Scale Auto, and I never have. So, but Rob working in NYC my entire career, you'd be amazed what some tractor drivers can do. Oh, uh, yeah. 
There's drivers and there's some good ones and there's some ones that are like how they become a driver, but it's what it is. 600 miles for England with Scotland. It's 875 miles. Oh, wow. Huh. You know that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's not pretty amazing. The length. <laughs> that's the length of your your town, yeah. <laughs> I know the country my parents come from. Uh, it's very small. It's uh, the smallest country in Central America. So it's like it's like the Rhode Island of Central America. I think it's smaller than Rhode Island. I think it's 90 miles across. It's El Salvador. Very tiny country. So you can imagine 90 mile. You could travel across the country in what two hours. <laughs> Two and a half hours, so, uh, yeah, yeah. The 963, going back to that scale auto, that'd be really cool to try that out. I can't wait to get it to run it around here. That's why I'm really happy having this track because I really needed a road course for those types of cars. The oval's great for what I do with you know the uh, dirt cars and all that, and uh, certain cars that are made for that. It's, it's nice, NASCARs cars and stuff like that. But this will be cool to to have you know this track to be able to do that so, yeah. all right so anything else going on with you guys already about half hour I think over half hour into the chat 36 minutes so if anybody has any questions on anything please shoot away uh, but uh just uh you know keep an open mind with if you're interested in getting a more information on this track. I mean, it's it's really, really. How would you say? Uh, nice to you know have options. I'm gonna put a link here to the track if you guys want to see it. So that's to Kevin's website, and uh, you could uh, check it out. Cost and everything, stuff like that. There's also ovals. And he's got quite a few ovals and the midvo harry has the midvo track he's going to make it you know got permission to make a design like that as well if you guys are interested in that he me give you a link to the ovals so you'll see the different ovals available and, uh, give me a sec here post the link here and on oval so, and I know he's going to be putting other designs out there. Here's the ovals. And, uh, I'll put that on there. Texas East to, yeah, because you're in Texas, aren't you, Danny? Mr. Wiley. Texas East to West, 773 is 915 miles. Yep. Texas is huge. <laughs> it's nice of you to have some good straights. Too many people forget straights. Yeah, that is true. They get over, they get wrapped up with too much of, you know, turns and then it kind of disrupts the flow of a track. And that's true. Very true. You know, when you have that happen. But, uh, that is a good point there, Mr. Swift Slot. Very good. Rob. Very good point, Rob. But, uh, uh, Let's see, I'm trying to see if, oh, please, um, any questions out there on anything else, man, or what you guys are thinking about, here we go, uh, let's, but, um, I'm trying to look something up here, mm. it but there are the other ones there uh, if you don't have to fill your area flow is better for you yep very true correct that is very true very very true the percent agree with that so I know Rob your, your tracks pretty cool I like it's how it's a single lane and it's got a lot of it's a good flow too and what you are what you run on it's nice to have you know something simple like that really really nicely I think I like the 
the way you have it designed and how you did the scenery in it. That's a nice looking track, so very nice. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, but, uh, yep. Alright, so about 40 minutes in, so got 13 people watching, so if anybody has any questions, I know that you, besides the usual regular guys, any new guys in here that are interested or have any questions, please let me know. And you could also email me too, or uh, message me on the Area 51 Eraser page. Uh, but uh, also Kevin takes, you know, emails as well, and I think uh, if you need to ask him anything, you know, problem. Yeah, it's a cool rally track. I like it. You know, the rally tracks are really popular in Spain. The Span Spaniards love rally tracks. It's cool. Some of them will put dirt on it and stuff. And they actually make it go through water sometimes. So, uh, Making my oval this summer. Oh, awesome. How many lanes is the oval going to be, Rob? You making a two lane or is it a one lane, three lane? What do you, how many lanes are you making? That'll be really interesting. I hope you do videos on that. On how you build it and stuff. Because that is a... Uh, That'd be fun to watch, you know. It's uh, it's good stuff. Yeah. Especially with your skill set, you really got it down. Um, but uh, yep, it'd be cool to see you do a video on your oval. Three lane, awesome. That's perfect. Three lanes, fine. That's great. That'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> so that'd be really a lot of fun there. How, what's the uh, footprint going to be like? Is it going to be like, you know, 10 feet, 12 feet, or are you making it smaller? It's not you can make a small bull ring. There's a few people that have a bull ring, and they're a lot of fun, too. How does look? You know, you can make those modified cars with the wings that we have here in the U.S. You know, there's a lot of those, and then also the other type of asphalt modified. <laughs> You nailed it, Rob. You don't have to fill your table with curves. Layout needs balance. Yep, very true. I agree with that. Yep, that'll be cool seeing Rob and Noble. That's cool. It'll be really, really nice. Cool, cool. All right. I'll still have to be in my parts so I can uh, fit it in my car. Me four by twelve. That's perfect. Four feet by twelve feet. That's a good size. That's that's a very good size. If you got the room for it, that's nice. It's, you know, it's perfect. Three lane oval like that size. That's really good. I like that. Can't wait to see that. It'd be really cool to see that. Check that out. Alright, well, if there's no more questions <coughs> and nothing else going on, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say uh, sign off. This is just an impromptu live. And, uh, you know, thanks for coming. And uh, appreciate it. I did ask Austin, New York Modifieds if they helped me out with a car that was six months. Really? They haven't gotten back to you? Hmm. Interesting. Why don't you forward me that email you sent them, uh, Twist Slots? Because I know the guy from... Uh, I've talked to him a little bit online. So, I mean, we should help you out with that. Shot. I'll give you my email. Real quick. So, what do you need? Like, parts or... Just ideas on bodies or something. Just let me know. See if I can help you out there. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. And like I say, always you uh, 